FPS. Frames per second. The more, the better. Everyone dreams about getting two 2080 Ti RTX and SLI to run every game and everything perfectly. But obviously, we don't all have that much money to invest in our hardware. So games optimize their performance to better utilize your hardware for things that are relevant. Here's a comparison of the graphics from 2007 and today. A major difference in quality. All in the sake of performance. So players tweak the settings and make the game run smooth as butter. Today we'll show you just how to do that while keeping your game looking slick. No need to destroy the graphics for FPS. Let's go. But before we begin, we put some useful commands for you to add in your auto exec file. Check the description for the good stuff. TF2's optimization works a little weird. Newer games use a very simple and effective method for saving power by simply not rendering that which you cannot see. This means that whatever's out of your sight doesn't exist. But TF2 instead has a map-specific settings, meaning that the map decides what you'll render and not the base game settings. The game is also mostly CPU-reliant, meaning that having an insane graphics card is not going to make things better if you bottleneck your setup with a crappy CPU. So going on Sujin, the worst map FPS-wise with any GPU, as powerful as they may be, will not be effective unless you have a good CPU to back them up. So if you're planning on upgrading your PC, make sure to have a proper balance between the parts it has. Number 1. Little random object Little random objects that have no effect on gameplay do have an effect on your CPU. And if you're starving for some FPS, then having them removed is a great start. Grass, flowers, pebbles and whatnot are all hard to see anyway, if not because you're focused on the objective and killing. So kiss them goodbye, they're in your way. The command is on screen right now. Number 2. The relatively new setting that allows you to see your allies through walls as you leave spawn is a very render-heavy task. As soon as you leave spawn, the game has to render your friendly players no matter where they are on the map, which could lead to some low FPS until the outline is over. Here's how it renders players through the map with the setting on. Here's how it renders players through the map with the setting off. So make sure to turn it off to help your game play at its best. The command is on screen right now. Number 3. Decals. Decals are very small yet graphically nice detail that adds to the feel of the game. Decals are sprays of players, bullet holes in the walls and so on. The command are decals and map decals determine the amount of decals that will exist. We recommend you turn them both off, it gives a little FPS boost and is sure to help you in the path to smooth gameplay. Number 4. Shadows, control with the command R shadows, are a heavy burden to render in every game. Usually just there for the looks, they don't add much to the gameplay and won't help you with pushing the payload. Disabling them gives you a great boost in FPS, so go ahead and give the command a value of 0. They can be turned off in the settings, only their quality can be tweaked, so use the command. Number 5. Corpses and body parts, gibs flying all over the place after a soldier or a demo used their primary weapon successfully, are a nuisance to render. To squeeze another 10-15 to 15 FPS, go ahead and disable them using the command on screen. Number 6. The amount of detail that each player model has does affect your FPS massively. The LOD, level of detail, they have could be hard on your hardware to handle. And the closer you are to a player, the more detail you see. But what if you could always see the lowest amount of polygons possible? To do so, use the command LOD transition distance and change it from the default value of 800 to a minus 1. This will eliminate the distance factor and the game will always consider you as far away from everyone as possible and our LOD will be giving a value of 2, which will seal the deal. Things might look funny and weird at first, but this boosts your FPS massively. The reason players see much more blocky is because the polygon count on their bottles has been decreased, meaning they have less parts, less details. Number 7. Since the game mainly relies on your CPU and not your GPU for rendering, Valve's logic, it also decides how many of its cores it will use automatically. But you want to utilize your hardware to its maximum power, make it more efficient and practical. So use the command MatQ mode and give it a value of 2. This allows the game to use all the cores of your CPU at once for better performance, assuming you do have a multi-core CPU. Number 8. 
Volumetric Light HDR. Fancy words and letters, but it mainly just makes it harder to render the game. Here's a comparison of Dust Bowl with and without HDR on. You can see how the difference is minimal, so if you're lacking some frames, go ahead and disable it in your game settings. Here's another example to make sure you're convinced. The amazing golden wrench with HDR on, and the same beautiful wrench with it off. The decision is yours. Number 9. Vertical Sync This brilliant feature prevents screen tearing and locks the FPS of the game to that of your screen, making your hardware work only as hard as its work can be displayed. In some games it can be of great use, but in others, namely TF2 and CSGO, it just makes the game harder than it should be. The problem with this feature is that it adds some delay to your mouse, some input lag, taking away from your accuracy. So disabling it might risk having some screen tearing, but it's worth the slight inconvenience you might have for better control of the game. So it might make things worse altogether, so keep it off. Number 10. The version of DirectX which the game works on can affect the FPS. The game can run on many versions, setting the value in console to 98, 95, 90, 81 and 80 all change the version and performance of the game. We recommend you set the value to 95 using the command mat dx level 95. Number 11. Pyromania. Pyro's strippy world and TF2's special setting low violence mode that makes the game child friendly when turned on have their supposed advantages, but they offer no FPS improvement and might make things even worse. Pyromania just removes the blood and makes Gibbs appear as gears, and low violence mode does even less, so don't change your settings there to make it better. Number 12. Launch Options. There are a few launch options that can greatly increase your FPS. At first, Dash High makes TF2 a priority process which will cause your CPU to work harder for it. And the second, check how many threads you have on your PC, and if you have more than four, then you can allocate more threads to the game than it already does by default. Use Dash Threads for that. In this example, you can see us allocating eight threads to the game, which will increase the power the game can use to run. Number 13. Antivirus programs constantly look for changes in your PC, checking each file on log to see if anything's going to potentially cause harm to your PC. So when you play the game and record a demo, download resources and whatnot, the antivirus will slow you down by checking each file as it enters your memory. The statistics file is constantly changed while you play, making your antivirus sniff through it constantly. So add the Steam folder to your exceptions in the settings of your antivirus program and hope no one uses a spray that can hack your PC. Number 14. No Hats Mode. A common setting in the official games, this can help your FPS greatly, as each of those items are either loaded with the already existing player model or change it and add even more polygons. Having them off might remove the entire Hat Fortress mechanic from the game, but it will sure make it more playable. There are plenty of other options we've shown and have yet to that can help your FPS. Number 15. The number of players on the map logically affects your FPS too. The more to render, the lower the FPS. So if you're really struggling and need another tip, don't play on a map with more than 24 players. 32 player servers and the like might not be enjoyable for you. We've been showing you ways to increase your FPS by not lowering the quality of your graphics, but if all of this didn't make enough of an improvement, you can set your DirectX to 81, which will nuke your graphics. Also, make sure your settings are set to the lowest possible options. This is a last resort. One more thing before it's over, Valve might claim to optimize the game, but all they've done is add blurred textures. Regardless of your settings, Matte MIP Map Textures is on by default. It makes models appear worse for a few seconds and improve their quality as soon as the timer passes. Here's how the engineer's blueprints look like before the timer runs out. And here's how they are afterwards. So this setting allows you to reach the required level of detail without waiting for any timer. Set matte MIP map textures to zero and save the weighing and the FPS. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has helped you increase your FPS and improve your experience with it. Leave a like to show support and dislike if you don't eat katleta every day like Delphi. And I won't see you in the next one. I'm leaving. Unfortunately, I have to go back to the army and I won't have enough time to make videos properly with Delphi. It was great fun. I always enjoyed digging through the comments to hopefully find someone giving criticism about my voicing or writing, but I mostly found people thinking I'm Delphi or some text-to-speech program. Nonetheless, I love this. Delphi gave me a chance to do what I like and is a great guy. 
I hope you continue watching this Ruski man and uh, all the best. My replacement will surely take it from where I left it to improve. Always. Farewell.